welcome to Turn Up the Volume. I'm Bridget Coles. I am so happy about today's inspirational show. You know, miracles happen every day. And Donna Caudell, she's a true example of this. Donna has beat the odds against a brain tumor. This beautiful, courageous woman has relied on her faith to get her through one of the most challenging times of her life. She is thriving and she is living her best life. Joining me today to share her story on Turn Up the Volume is Donna Condell. Donna, welcome to the show. Oh, it's, yes, it's wonderful <laughs> to be here and thank you. You look amazing. Well, so do you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> well, tell us about just how wonderful you are. We'll start with your beginnings here in, in Mansfield. I moved to oh, Mansfield, Ohio on June 30th of 1967. My parents decided that this was the place to come to for work. And that brought us here. We lived, moved on Trimble Road, lived in my aunt and uncle's garage for three months. I walked into Mansfield Senior School knowing three people in the entire place. I came from a town that had 1,500 people to a school that had 1,500 people. I, I can still remember walking in and thinking, oh, <laughs> okay, all right. But it didn't take me long to find friends. And even now, those friends are still dear to my heart and we still stay in contact. And you've had a, a wonderful uh, life here. Uh, one yes. of the great things is you're also an author. Yes, I am. A published author, been published several times. I have one published book and I'm working on the next one. I have the title for the next one. It will be called The Remnant Bin. I'm also a quilter. And I have learned that I like to go to the remnant bin in the fabric stores and I get bits and pieces and parts. And you know, that's, that's how God does us. He takes bits and pieces and parts and puts us together and makes a beautiful pattern. It, sometimes it can be a little frightening. Sometimes you don't understand what's going on and you, that's when you have to have total faith in Him and that what He does for us is best and to our good. And I know your faith was tested about a year and a half ago, yes. Donna, with a diagnosis that you got for the brain tumor. Talk about that, how that came out. Uh, well, um, with the illness that I'm diagnosed with, MRIs are a way of life for me. Um, I'm checked at least once a year. And when I went for my MRI, they discovered a meningioma tumor. It was above my left ear. It was between the, the temple and the left ear. But I... No, no seizures, no, um, no issues in talking, but with um, the MRI then in 2017, this was different. Mm -hmm. This was totally different. So I, was, um, I had an MRI uh, every three months, and they were watching to see um, how it would grow or not grow or mm -hmm. stay stable. There was also what they called a mass effect, which is a swelling and pressure. And it wasn't actually in my brain, it was in the sheath that's between the uh, skull and the brain, but there's nowhere for it to go but in, and that's what causes the uh, swelling and the pressure. Um, in no October of last year, I had the follow-up MRI, and they found that it had enlarged again, and the mass effect had gone from mild moderate so it was decided then it was probably best for me to go to have the craniotomy and have it taken out that happened on November 2nd of last year uh, I had surgery on Friday morning and I went home Tuesday morning of the next week wow. <laughs> went home uh, now I wasn't by myself all that time but uh, my daughter determined I know my mom She'll be better off at home, and she'll be fine. And I, you know, I'm still still improving, still <laughs> still gaining strength. I I didn't realize how tired I was until I wasn't so tired anymore. Mm. And but the fatigue is something that can be general. Mm -hmm. Fatigue can be debilitating, and I know what debilitating fatigue is. Mm. So, but anymore, I you know I'm up and about and going and here and there. <laughs> Everywhere. You're doing everything because you're riding Harley <laughs> Davidsons, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You were just you were just something else. I love it. I love it, Donna. You know, it's been about three weeks ago we went down to um, the Huntington, West Virginia area. It's called Hillbilly Hot Dog. Okay. It's right on the riverbank. And oh, that, that sounds like fun. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> we got drenched. Oh, <laughs> Lord, we were drenched, though. And it, but the ones where, where you get the big rainstorms are the ones that you really remember. <laughs> but, yeah, I um, last uh, Labor Day, mm -hmm. uh, I got to go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we were in the Harley Museum. And there was a picture there of a, of a Harley owners group and it was from the early 1900s and it was from Mansfield, Ohio. So I had a, I had a good time <laughs> letting everybody know around me, that's where I live. That's where I'm from. <laughs> you know, the day of your surgery, Donna, what was that like for you preparing for that? I was uneasy, didn't know what to expect. Um, and sometimes I would be all right with it. You know, they're just, I mean, surgery is surgery is surgery. Yeah. And I mean, they can operate on your little toe and have complications, but it's a little different, you know, when they're actually going in and, and taking, you know, I have a titanium plate here now. And, uh, I, you know, I wonder if I'm going to set off the security <laughs> at the airport. <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't been in an airport since I had the surgery, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I think what's so amazing about your story, the, the size of the tumor, you had no idea. It was the idea. golf ball. No, and I had no idea it was there. Oh, wow. mm -mm. And do they know what caused it? Um, from We Googled the you-know-what out of it, okay, oh, trying yeah. to figure and out And they what. always tell you, not do to do not, that, don't but Google. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it can be like the neurofibromatosis, mm -hmm. that genetic. It's, it's like part of that, and it, it can come back. And I was checked in June. Mm -hmm to see if that was happening and it, it's, everything's still good. Oh, that's wonderful um, news. Your attitude throughout all of this, <laughs> you, the entire journey, it's just, it, it is amazing. Cause well, you really, you. you really are an inspiration to a lot of people, Donna, you really well, are. Well, I, I like to be. Um, I've had a lot of challenges in the last uh, few years and you learn to, um, one of the, if you have a bad day, if you have a bad day, Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to know that when 12 o'clock comes tonight, the day's going to be over. You will never, ever have to face this day ever again. Now, there might be one better, and there might be one that's worse, but this one will be gone. How has your faith stayed so strong? Donna, what do you attribute that to? You talk about what won't break you makes you stronger. Well, I'm thinking I can bench press a Buick by now. <laughs> I think you could too. <laughs> I, I believe it's a choice. You know, you, you, there's times I'm like, Lord, I can't take no more, okay? I'm, but you, find, you get up the next morning, yes. you, get, <laughs> you get your clothes on, you do what needs to be done, and go from there. Donna, what advice would you give to someone who's going through something right now, whether it's an, an illness, um, maybe it's an addiction, or just whatever the challenge is that they are trying to overcome in their life, what would you tell them to help encourage them that they can make it? Know that you can make it. Know that you can. You know, there are those that they'll talk about how they feel. And of course, all of us have feelings, but there's things you feel and there's things that you have to know. And when what you know goes against what you're feeling, you have to stand on what you know and not necessarily how things feel. You know, feelings are like they, a roller coaster that can go up and down all the time. But if you have a good solid foundation in what you know and who you know, then you'll make it. And that's so true. <laughs> that is so true, Tyler. Well, I'm so glad that you came here to share oh. your story. I really am. And I look forward to seeing you riding on that Harley. <laughs> now, well, if, if anyone wanted to contact you to have you come out and speak to them or they would like to uh, purchase a, a book or okay. even just maybe to contact you for just words of encouragement or prayer, how can they contact you? Well, uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, Donna Faye Caudill. 
And uh, my email is dcau559163 at aol.com. I know what it feels like to feel like nobody cares. I know what it feels like. And I care. I care. You know, I, I've said when I, when I lay down to go to sleep of a night and I go to pray and I ask God to let that one know that feels like they have no friend. For those that think they can't make it another day to give them strength. And I have said when others come to me and say, I don't know where my strength came from, I like to think it's an answer to my prayer because that's who I prayed for was the one that didn't think they could make it that day. I love you. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. And we have to have you come back. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Maybe you can come back with the Harley. We'll do the interview. <laughs> okay. That'll All be right. even better. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Turn Up the Volume. I'm Ronald T. Stewart, Sr. I'm a retired Army veteran, and I support Donnie Bryant for mayor. He likes military people, people with military background. I want our veterans to have priority here in Mansfield because you guys uh, do a heck of a job for our country, and for our city, for our state. I want to make sure that you have an opportunity here in Mansfield. Turn Up the Volume was filmed in downtown Mansfield inside the Tritico building. Newly renovated space is available now. Call 419-526-1695 today. This episode is brought to you by Dugan Real Estate, the most trusted name in homes. For all the latest real estate listings, visit DuganRA.com. local marathon runner Barbara Piper has discovered that running at her own pace when the time feels right is the best recipe for success. She has made her mark on the running world, sealing victories at the Columbus Marathon, the Niagara Falls Half Marathon, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, just to name a few. But Barb's efforts across the country landed her a qualifying spot in the Boston Marathon four times during her decorated career. We're going to learn more about this beautiful woman with a heart of gold that she is sharing with the world. Let's turn up the volume. All right, Barb, I welcome. Like cool. It's so good to see you. Nice to be here. You know, it's just a blessing. Another day, beautiful, sunshiny day. Well, we were talking about how beautiful you are and sharing that beauty with the world. Tell us a, a little bit about uh, <laughs> oh, what you've been doing. Way too gracious, beautiful, you know. My granddaughter doesn't think I'm old. It's really cute because she said we're twins. <laughs> I mean, you can't get a bigger compliment when a five-year-old said they're twins with almost 66-year-old. I'll take that. So how do I start? You know, it's such a long journey. It seems like I've already lived two lives already. My current situation is that I took a nosedive. You know, I've been in a in the trenches with Norbert now, 23 years actively fighting cancer, never in remission. When I say 23 years, it just seems like an eternity, which it has been. Um, my son, Bryant, my youngest, um, crushed foot injury, building highways out there with Shelly and saying a job that he just loved dearly. Well, that didn't turn out too well, but Three, four months into it, a guy driving his heavy pieces, piece of equipment basically just hit a curb and it ricocheted on his foot. So we're still dealing with that. Mercer got in there, and so that's going on four years now. And while I'm obsessing and stressing about Norbert and Bryant, um, my oldest son, Bernard, uh, who's supposed to be my well person, um, died suddenly in his sleep of a massive heart attack. So. To be honest with you, when my son died, I had pretty much promised myself that it is no way I'm gonna live through that. That was going to be 
the death of me. I was not going to live through it. I was determined that I wasn't going to live through it. I had already decided that there wouldn't be life without Bernard. But it's amazing, the grace of God. He surrounded me with you, my bodyguard, Sam. People just started just coming in, and I took note of all of that. You know, I used to ask people, how do you know who's even there at a funeral? How do you know who's present during such a terrible, tragic time in your life? And now that I look back on it, you remember precisely everyone who were there. You remember everything they said. It's like your whole world is evolving in slow motion. And I think that's what God gives us because you need to replay that to let you know these people didn't show up when I wanted them to at some point in my life. They showed up when I needed them to. And that's key, absolutely. I'll tell you, Barbara, all the years that I've known you, you have always just been a beacon of hope and so much strength and everyone just admires that. They're so drawn to you with that. So dealing with everything with your husband battling cancer for 23 years and then losing your son, mm. but just being there with you and mm -hmm. seeing just how strong you were throughout all of that, all of that. Yeah. You know, and Dan too, I want to talk a, a little bit about the perception of strength. Yeah. I don't perceive myself as a strong person. I really don't. I, I perceive myself as this person who was raised on this big farm to just dig your heels in and get it done. I see myself as idolizing my daddy. You know, in the South, you don't have a dad, you have a daddy. And when you have a good daddy, it's like, that's all you need. I noticed with um, everything that you, you've been through, Barb, you're always a positive person. Every time I've ever seen you or anybody sees you in the community, you're always positive. Did you ever feel it at a time where you felt maybe depression coming in? Because with everything that you, you're dealing with, I mean, we all look at you and everybody thinks, oh, she's superhuman. This woman's running marathons all over the world. She's in great shape. Yeah. She's a wonderful lady. There's no way that Barbara has a bad day. Mm -hmm. But we know that's not true. It's not true that. at all. Actually, I had not had many bad days until the fall of 2017. I just didn't feel like myself, and my stomach was hurting, and I went to gastro. Of course, I didn't want to go to the regular doctor because you got to pay them, and then they refer you to the specialist. Not me, darling. I go straight to the specialist, and I tell them what's wrong with me. <laughs> well, they, they listen. I, guess, I think maybe I might have an ulcer or something. Well, lo and behold, they did the endoscope, and I had two huge ulcers. Well, then I found out that I was not only uh, malnourished because the food wasn't going down, I wasn't absorbing anything, um, but I was just totally depressed. I had anxiety. I remember having my first anxiety attack and I was like, oh my God, what was that? I mean, I got real nervous. I started sweating all over. I mean, literally like somebody had dropped a bucket of water over me. And I was like, oh wow, this is serious stuff because it was, it was not pretty. Yeah. We'll have more when Turn Up the Volume continues. When's the last time you seen your mayor here in the schools? I've never heard of him until I was here. You've never heard of him. So when I say I'm running against the current mayor, he's not my enemy but I think I'm the best man for the job. And I'll tell you why, because one of the things I'm gonna do on day one when I take office after November 5th, I'm gonna make a partnership with our schools. That means that I want you, all of you, when you're graduating, I want you to have a job when you leave. I want you to have some type of economic opportunity. Turn Up the Volume was filmed in downtown Mansfield inside the Tritical Building. Newly renovated space is available now. Call 419-526-1695 today. This episode is brought to you by Dugan Real Estate, the most trusted name in home. 
For all the latest real estate listings, visit DuganRA.com. Welcome back to Turn Up the Volume. We are talking with local marathon super lady. I love her, Barbara Parker. Barb, thank you so much for being on the show. Before we took a break, we were talking about how you dealt with depression, with everything that was going on um, in your life. And uh, you, you did some uh, amazing things to help you get through that, mm -hmm. and now you're helping others. Yes, I really want to touch on a, or the wrap up of that because mm -hmm. depression by society is kind of deemed taboo. It's like, oh, why is you're depressed? Is there something wrong? Well, yeah, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with all of us. It's a matter of depression being one of those things that's labeled as, no, you're not supposed to be. You're supposed to just kind of hide that. I'm here to tell anyone who's listening today, if you have one takeaway, it will be this. If you are not feeling well mentally, you need to reach out for help because that help and that reaching out is what's going to save you and to bring yes. you back. Because I reached out to Bridget, I reached out to Mindy Woods, started doing yoga. She came to my house and gave me yoga sessions. And I reached out to my pastor's wife. She gave me spiritual counseling. I reached out to uh, close friends. And I say, this is happening to me. And you know what? It's really strange because my friend Jackie, Jackie Newman, she did not really know what was happening to me. But God put it on her heart to call me, Barb. And when she called me, she said, you don't sound quite right. And within an hour, she drove from Mansfield to Columbus. She knocked at my door. She said, pack your bag. We're out of here. We're going on a road trip. You're getting out of this space. If people are not in the know, you're going to suffer in silence. And I think that's what America and the world has taught people to do, is that just go ahead and suffer in silence as long as you put on that bright smile yes. when you're in the public, or just pretend that you're okay. That's not okay. That's not okay at all. And I'll be the first person to tell you there is no shame in being ill, be it physically or mentally. You need to get the proper help. And Barb, if you could give a message to any parent out there who has lost a child, because mm. just watching you and observing you and the strength that you've had and how you have helped others to get through, what, what would you tell them? Uh, do everything in your human power to make sure that you are there for your children, no matter what it is. And a lot of people are attaching love to strings attached. Like, you know, if you're good, I love you. That unconditional love. My son Bernard knew that he could come to me with anything. And he knew mama was going to be there. Okay? There was no way that my love had conditions on it. Bernard had a drinking problem, chip off the old block, just like his dad. Sweet as apple pie, I was very mild-mannered, just so respectable, so respectable. Have a drink, it's just like, ooh, where'd this person come from? Yes, and so Bernard knew that no matter what he did, where he was, what situation he was in, he could always call me. My grief, just personally, my grief process, if I had felt like I had failed Bernard in any way, I wouldn't be able to grieve successfully. I grieve, I miss him, but I know 100% I've never failed him. And that's what helps me get through it. Thank you so much. We love you. <laughs> and look forward to having you come back. Thank you. And next time you come back, you got to get up, get us in shape. Oh, well, yeah. I had you in shape. You just went back I and, know, and I you did. let it go. I went bad. I let it go. Oh my gosh, I had, what, four or five women <laughs> yeah, four or five in plus. a month's time yeah. ready to run the Miss Ohio. You almost won your age group I, I did. by less than a minute. I know. We won't tell everybody what year that was. But that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Never too old. Never, Never too, old. too old. Because the thing about it is, mm -hmm. I have mornings that I'm sad. 
even you know going through the grief process and all this stuff and uh, I'm sad and then I, I hit the floor and I say Barbara go get them I got up at five o'clock this morning ran seven and a half miles four of those miles were speed miles and if I can do it anybody can do it you have to want that for yourself either you pay now eat right exercise take care of the mental and the physical or you pay later that's that's your choice that's it good advice <laughs> from a beautiful lady <laughs> thank you for tuning in to turn up the volume Can staying positive help you heal? Well, research shows that positive thinking can prevent a host of diseases and ailments such as cardiovascular disease, depression, and anxiety. Positive thinking also does good things in people's mindset that leads to better living habits. Those better living habits to improve your outlook include exercise, nothing improves your mood or sharpens your focus, and increases your energy like a good workout. How about keeping a journal? This is one more thing that science agrees on. Journaling is good for your health. It can help you get out of depression and it works wonders on your mood. Another good habit, laugh it up. Finding a reason to laugh. Even if you have to force it a little, it can make all the difference in the world. Laughter is another stress reliever that improves mood and promotes healing. And finally, another good habit, giving back and doing something for others. Volunteering has recorded psychological benefits and giving back has been found to be related to good mental health. Most importantly, you have to realize you're stronger than ever and there's comfort to be found and knowing that life, it might be tough, but you're tougher and nothing's going to get you down.